White's in a bit of trouble here, it seems. Black has an extra knight and a couple of extra pawns. The bishop at f2 is pinned and under attack. White has a rook on the open g-file, but none of the other pieces are in a position to attack. So many players would capture the knight here. But there's a problem. If you capture the knight with a queen, then you lose the bishop. If you capture the knight with the rook, you run into a nasty pin, and then if you attempt to double and attack the king side, it just isn't worth the queen. It almost works. You get a nice check, the king moves over, you can threaten a nasty discovered check, but black tosses a check if he wants to, king moves, and then all the pressure on the diagonal is released. So, going back to the starting position, white has to look for something better. Now, the player of the white pieces was the Englishman Howard Staunton, one of the best players of his time. And this game was played a long time ago, back in London in 1840. Staunton understood the game of chess well, and he knew that you always have to look at a move that's both a capture and a check. That's one of the most important things to do if you're going to build up a combination. Sometimes such moves don't work immediately, but they're always worth a look. So let's see. Well, what happens if he takes the rook? Then there's a check. That looks pretty good. Black can block the check. And then white grabs black's queen. The queen had no time to run away because black's king was in check. So, after rook takes g7 check, the opponent, named Harrison, had to move the king to h8. Now, it looks like there's still a lot of problems. The same sort of tactics we saw before, but what is white going to do about that bishop at f2? It's pinned. Well, white sets up a threat, a threat of a discovered check. At the same time, white's queen attacks both black's queen and the white knight. And on top of everything, the rook at g7 is defended. Well, of course, black might have just blocked. That's possible. But after queen takes h2, taking the rook doesn't quite work because there's a fantastic checkmate available. The hunt begins with a check on the g-file. King tries to run away, and the queen captures a pawn with check, but not the pawn at h7, as you might think, but the pawn at c7. The king, in any case, has to go to e8, but now, with rook g7, white threatens checkmate at e7. If the bishop blocks, then white's bishop goes to f6, eating a pawn and supporting the checkmate at e7. If the rook blocks, then there's a check. That forces the rook back, there's no choice. Now, that rook at f8 is pinned, so the bishop can, in any case, take the pawn, and then if the rook goes, it's mate. Well, with all that in mind, black took the queen. But now, there's a discovered check. The bishop at d4 will give a check as soon as the rook moves. The rook takes the f-pawn with check, but the rook can't be captured because black must move the king. Then the rook returns. This is a maneuver known as a windmill. After the king goes back into the corner, white decided to finish things off the short way, played a discovered check again, there's no way to capture the rook because the king is in check, so black must block with something. Try blocking with the knight. There it goes. Then the rook, bishop still hungry, checkmate. But to show the windmill in its full glory, let's play it the fun way. Instead of the short checkmate, 
the pawn could be captured at c7 with check. Well, that's our friend to capture and a check. Then the king moves, the rook goes back and gives another check, king forced to the corner, take another pawn with check. King moves back, same old thing. Yep, we're still hungry. There, 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 and now white could just do the same theme as before. Rook g6 check, knight e5, bishop e5 check, rook f6, and mate. So, there's a good example of a windmill. It's not something that comes up every day, but you certainly don't want to miss it when it comes along because it's not only very effective and will win the game and so on in most cases, but it's also just a whole lot of fun. So enjoy the windmill tactic, as we've seen in the game Staunton vs. Harrison from London, 1840.